guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have Vespertine, Vespertine, I don't know if I said that right, by Margaret Robertson. So I did enjoy her uh, Sorcerer Thorns book and The Enchanted of Ravens, which I did like this. This one was a little bit different from what she would normally write. I was like, oh, okay. A bit different wordings, but I actually got, so the first few pages was like, hmm, okay. But as I got through the book, I was like, oh, I actually like this now. So, <laughs> So this is the Alcrate edition book, by the way. This is the Alcrate. I was gonna get, didn't realize that the uh, Fair Root was going to edition, but I was like, you know what? Let's try a different book. And now that I know how to get Alcrates, you guys might see some more Alcrates coming in, which I cannot wait. <clears throat> so this is the end papers, which is so beautiful. And then we have this for the stencil art as well. Little birds. And then we have like this gold spine as well, and it's also on the back, which I love. <coughs> <coughs> the dead of Laurel or do not rest. Artemis is trying to be the Grey Sister, a nun who cleanses the body of a deceased so that the souls can pass on. On otherwise, they can rise as spirits with a ravaging hunger for the living. <coughs> Out. She would rather deal with the dead than the living who trade whispers about her scarred hands and troubled past. When her confit is attacked by a possessed soldier, Artemis fight defends it by waking an ancient spirit bound to a, a saint relic. It is revered and ma uh, male violent before bleh, being that threatened to the possessed her the moment she dropped her guard. Wilding it is extraordinary powers, almost consumes her, but death has come to Laurel, and only this her team, a priestess trained to wield a high relic, has only a chance of stopping it. With the knowledge of first Patine's loss to the time, Artemis turns to the last remaining expert for help. The Revenant is itself. She unravels in the sinister mystery of saints and secrets and dark magic. Her bond with the Revenant grows, and when a hidden evil begins to surface, she discovers the face of this enemy would require her to betray everything she has ever taught to believe, if the Revenant doesn't betray her first. I was like, this is so interesting. So this is literally like a nun being a badass. So. <clears throat> so the first one here. They're at their weakest now. Stop dawdling and destroy them before they regain their senses. Or is, is it my power too much for you, nun? So this is where obviously she has taken the relic and the good person is like, you're weak. You are pathetic kind of thing. I can protect you from the blood as long as I'm not trying to do as many things as others at the same time. But that's all. Swords, arrow, axes, anything that belongs to the physical world can still harm your pathetic fetal flesh. I was like, wow. This person is quite um, rude. There's one thing I know for certain. The tap we fended off. The spirits weren't targeting your conflict at random or just to kill some nuns. More's the pity, they were sent here to destroy my relic. And it gets more interesting from there. Do I need to speak more slowly for your pathetic meat brain to keep up? They were sent there to destroy my relic, or most certainly, because I was the closest thing powerful enough to stop them. Get it now? So this is quite interesting to see how this relic person, the Revenant, was being really arty about it. But he was trying to pretty much tell them, you need to protect me as well. You do not realise that there's something, nothing more, so bleh, there's nothing mystical about ravens, don't you? They don't gather around convents because they're divine um, messengers or your goddess. They come because they were humans bring, bring the corpses. That's where humans bring the corpses, yeah. It's gross. <laughs> Lady, we beg for your servants. Be gone, foul spirit. We ask protection for those within. We cast you out, we banish you into the dark. May your prayers st stand fast against evil. The dead are not welcome here. May your faith stand our iron through our bodies or dust. And then, we have this. This is something I actually enjoyed. So this is the heart tree of spirits. So you have the first order, second order, third order, fourth and the fifth. <coughs> so it's all about the orders. Just like that, which was fun. And then we have this on the end bit too. 
Okay. <clears throat> so, I felt this bit went too long for me, so like I said at the beginning, I did kind of go slowly up. <clears throat> um, so I was already prepared to love this book when I saw Margaret uh, Robertson describe it as a medieval venom. Add to the powerful demon and undercurrent of a relig religious drama and I was in heaven. Okay, this was a really good book to read. <clears throat> I suppose it's going on a list of characters that I'm delighted to share a name with. She's a great sister doing her best to keep her head down as she works alongside nuns at Conventi. Trying to draw, not trying not to draw attention to herself after being possessed as a child and living with the trauma of things she had to do while she's under the revenant control. But when her convent, uh, convent is invaded by an army of possessed soldiers, she has no choice to choose a powerful saint's relic and open her body and mind to a revenant far stronger than she has ever met before. Her journey turns into uh, her journey turns her into a Joan of Arc figure, a Vespertine, and while her some are trying to stop her from ever coming into her, into her full power. Others are shouting and screaming her name as she becomes their hero. I'm a saint, uh, um, Artemis. I mean, definitely. If something, <clears throat> all these little nicks and backs, and I was like, yes, that's what I like. So, so soon as I heard like Joan of Arc, I was like, oh my god, yes, hello. I wouldn't believe. Actually, to be honest, I would love it if they made this book as a movie. All sorts of thorns. If they made any of these the movies, I will be like, hell yes, me want to watch. <clears throat> the way the obsession was written was excellent, excellent, excellently done. There's always a risk of the kind of things coming off icky with the constant dynamic inherent in possession, but I think that the author handled this fantastically. The way that Artemis' trauma around possession is handled, uh, handled in a delicate and sensitive way, and if Artemis uh, and Reverend grow closer and build rapport, it definitely doesn't feel like there's a power imbalance, which is helped by the fact that Artemis is in control of the Reverend's relic and has the power to destroy him if so she chooses. Speaking of the rapport, the relationship between Artemis and the Reverend is perfect. It gives more per more like perfect banter to them. You can see like as I was reading the quotes, that he's like quite savage with his words. I'm like, oh my god, what is going on? But it's like throughout the book, those savage words slowly like gets different. <clears throat> um, and I was absolutely melting as I watched them slowly learn to trust, uh, protect each other. Artemis is in a compassion and caring character. When I watched the start of the rabbit of the revenant, it made my heart warm. I actually really enjoyed the book. The of this. Author, she explained the ideas of uh, legend saints and the way that she became a Vespertine and passed in the legend in a blink of an eye. How cool is that? I would definitely, guys, if you think this would be a great movie, comment down below because I think this would be a lovely movie to be reading because it's so different and it's quite cool to read as well. So I just fully enjoyed the book. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy it and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.